welcome to an AMB animation live stream right so I think um, I haven't been on Facebook page for a while so apologies about that um, and I've got some time on my hands and what with the recent news of the passing of one of the greatest animators who ever lived uh, Richard Williams um, somebody who really influenced me when I was uh, growing up um, when I was at the age of uh, I think I'll start and then I'll tell you what I'm doing so when I was at the age of um, I think about 11 years old this particular film came out called Who Framed Roger Rabbit and uh, I was absolutely nuts for it and obviously I mean Richard Williams he rejuvenated uh, hand-drawn animation he brought uh, he brought it back uh, you know into the into the mainstream into the public eye he was the animation director many people brought it back but uh, obviously the he was the one who was uh, responsible and at the helm for the overseeing the animation side of the film and um, of course he created a you know uh, me being from the United Kingdom he rejuvenated uh, hand-drawn animation or I would say thanks to Richard Williams there were some decent hand-drawn animators in the UK because hand-drawn animation in the UK wasn't a particularly strong point but then uh, Richard Williams moved there and um, obviously started training people he brought Art Babbitt over and um, he basically uh, made animation great in my country of origin and uh, Roger Rabbit was made there uh, so um, uh, a lot of uh, the super talents from America came over and uh, you know worked on it but uh, a lot of people learned a lot of things about animation um, and the Brits were able to uh, start to do a bit of good hand-drawn animation thanks to Richard Williams so I'm personally very grateful to him for that as well so um, what more fitting thing to do um, on a live stream on Facebook um, than to uh, just say my uh, little farewell to him by making a study of uh, one particular scene from that movie now I'm not particularly sure if Mr. Williams animated this scene I know that he did a lot of baby Herman bec because uh, apparently after doing a bit of research he absolutely loved baby Herman so he did all of those scenes but the reason I picked this scene out is this is one particular scene that you know it means a hell of a lot to me because I wanted to be an animator even when I was eight years old um, and uh, that was from seeing Sword in the Stone when I was six I wanted to write comics because I read Asterix and I was nuts about Asterix but um, then obviously you know including like today's generation they, they're all hot for the Pixar and the Frozens and all that and the Moanas and so they should be I was really sucked into what was coming on at the cinema then and uh, Richard Williams was all there so I, I you know I think I must have been about 11 at the time when this film came out and I was nuts for it and I would draw Roger Rabbit all the time and here's the funny thing I had a Roger Rabbit sticker book or some kind of book that had a couple of frames from this scene in motion and I was trying to break it down as an 11 year old as a 10 year old and study it even then obviously in my naive crude way and um, I uh, what happened was is that I I got so good at copying it that my teacher asked me to stand in front of the class of all the younger kids and analyze and and basically teach them how to draw and uh, this particular one particular pose from this scene so um, I think uh, I thought well you know what I was looking around trying to do a bit of research as to which ones did uh, Richard Williams animate and this is that it's quite hard to find out online especially with the current news that he's he's sadly left us but um so i said you know what i'm just gonna go and get personal and do the one that that i remember most and that's the take scene from uh from um 
from Roger Rabbit. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna like what better thing? The the animated take is something that used to be a staple that used to have to be studied all the time. And I'm gonna shove this right in the face of all those animation mentor people and all those Pixar people that try to damn people who use what's called the W pose or indeed it's inverse which is the M pose and call it generic and you know in my opinion you know their acting is generic it's all a matter of opinion I mean look at the the lovely this is why I am a firm believer in the W pose and the M pose you know which is not the fashionable thing to do nowadays but you know screw fashion I grew up on this stuff so I love this stuff and you're going to really see, um, you know, as I make a study of this scene, I'm just blocking out the roughs and then we'll get in and talk about it. I'm just giving myself some kind of blueprint to work with. But right here, right off the bat, we can see the W pose or the M pose because it's in, in, in reverse taking place here. Now, what I'm doing is I'm just making a study of all the silhouettes of the particular poses and then we'll get in and we'll analyze the expressions and we'll talk about the drawing the rabbit and all those kind of things so but what it also is an exercise in is is, is timing because the timing uh the spacing which is the slowing in and slowing out so between these two keys here look how close they are together and then we got a big move here like this i'll throw in a breakdown but i'll do that a uh, a little bit later I'm just gonna work that work out all my major keys at the moment let's see if I've got anyone online Facebook I don't know um, why don't you use TV paint because it's of no relevance to what I do okay I'm drawing frame by frame here TV paint be damned it's not TV paint that has the talent it's me screw the software okay TV paint will come and go why didn't Richard Williams use, I don't know, a Bic pencil instead of a... Why did he use a Chroma color pencil instead of a Bic pencil? That kind of question I've no time for. And I gave it time. So I guess I do. Right. So um, let's move on to the real thing, the animation. For those of you who wonder why am I being like that? Well, I I am the founder and creator of the real animator training library i real animator training library doesn't sugarcoat things i don't sugarcoat things i cut to the chase animation is in dire dire position right now uh, because it has become the case but back in the day it used to be exclusive to people who actually could draw or had artistic ability um, uh, but now it's become this push button nonsense where anybody can have a go that's fine anybody can have a go but then pe the standards are going to get lower the expectations are going to get higher because people don't appreciate skill ability and talent which is why I'm doing this stream I'm making a study of something important uh, a legendary animator's uh, style if he even if he didn't animate the scene I don't know he would have overseen it as the director he would have had to approve it uh, the the tool that you use okay it's like what make of toilets are there okay why don't you go and shit in a you know I don't know a shank toilet or or, or you know a different make it's just like uh, I'm it's got no relevance so the sooner people who follow me understand that the sooner they're going to start producing animation that is actually good and of substance. You know, Richard Williams, it's fitting that we're doing a stream on Richard Williams. The Pixar animators are the most software dependent people out there, right? Yet you go online, you look for some Richard Williams interviews, you look for some Richard Williams quotes. It's not hard to find. They all invited him to come and teach them how to animate and he said to them I don't understand software I don't use it they said that's not what we're coming to you for and then when it finished they said 90% of the stuff he talked about was relevant so 
Um, am I being harsh? No, because quite frankly, the medium I love is being is suffering because of the software mentality, as if somehow software is the thing that's giving you the ability. Now, learn the skills, okay? So that's why I'm not using that. TV paint, come and pay me a million dollars and then maybe I'll sing you praises, okay? Because quite frankly, you know, if, if I can benefit from, from bigging up a piece of kit from, you know, uh, people who are far wealthier than I am, then maybe I can get something out of it like that. But otherwise, I'll speak absolute truth, useless. Useless if you don't know how to animate. Very useful if you do. So that's my explanation about why I don't use TV paint. I'm actually using storyboard software at the moment to prove that point exactly. It's got nothing to do. I'm just drawing one thing after the other. Now this particular thing is interesting because he's coming back. Now he's going to have to stay in there. but So that's going to be the interesting breakdown. But I'm going to take it right to the last extreme. Okay, So there's going to be a lot of explanation to do. Here, so he comes right back like this. So anyway, getting back onto the actual point, okay, uh, about what we're doing today is I'm breaking down a scene from uh, Richard Williams, or I don't know who animated this scene, but one of my most memorable scenes is this amazing Dex Avery style take um, of uh, from Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and I think it's a nice way of um, remembering um, one of the greatest animators in the world who ever lived, and one of the most influential animators. And as an animation educator myself now, one of the greatest animation teachers in the world, if not the greatest, um, Richard Williams. Um, so this is my way of, um, of memorizing him. So again, if I sound a little bit uh, harsh about the software, I'm just pointing out exactly, you know, this is a stream about pure animation skills, animation skills and animation ability. I mean, you, Richard Williams' animator survival kit is a book still used today and still studied today as the animation book to buy, okay? And he doesn't tell you which piece of software you need to be using in order to follow along to his book. So that is why I'm being extra um, harsh with my points on that. This is art. This is skill. Okay? This isn't push button, you know, gut corner stuff. Now I'm focusing on the um this bit is not on this. This has been a pal uh square upload, so I'm gonna have to make up that rear foot. So there's a lot of interesting things going on here, but we've got we've got this at the moment. Now he's a little I I feel my volumes are quite okay, but I feel he's a little bit big, so I'm gonna bring him down just a tad. Let's check that arc out there. Now I've gone and drawn on the background on one of these frames, have I? No? Okay, anyway, we'll find that out later. Right, so I'm gonna make a study of this take and we're gonna look at how the laws of animation apply, the arc, so the down, you know, the down again Richard Williams's book always focuses on about you know the walk positions you know and I think let's go through them just even before I finish blocking this uh, rough out let's just go through what those positions are so you can understand a lot of people who buy his book okay a lot of thank you Holly a lot of people who buy his book you know particularly maybe the people who think the software is going to do do the thing for them okay 
they go, oh, it's all about walk cycles. It's just a bloody book about walks. I want to learn how to fight and punch and kick and all that sort of thing. Well, you know, let's take a look at this and let's explain why he does it. Okay? For those kind of people who moan and complain about that. Right? Well, what's the first pose? It's a contact. What's the second one he talks about? He talks about a down. Then he talks about a pass position. Then he talks about an up. And then he talks about going back to contact. Okay? Now, Let's look at this. It's a starting position. We can call that he's making his contact with the ground, but it's a starting position. Let's say that contact is a starting position. What does he do? Okay. Now here he goes up a little bit. We, once you know these things, you can mix and match. Okay. But he goes up a bit. Then he's got a down. Okay. A down pose. Then he's got an up pose. Okay. And then somewhere when we're going to break this down, there's going to be passing poses. And that is how we transition between movements. And if you can understand it in a certain order for walks, then pretty much everything that you're going to do is going to follow that kind of thing. You need to get over the fact of what the action is you're trying to do and learn the mechanics and the rules. And that's why he does that. So, quite frankly, I think it's a great way to learn is to just focus on one thing. And it's very, very important that people do that. So um, I think that, you know, um, it's, it's, that's the right thing. Now, wow, this is amazing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on to the next key. I hope I'm going to have some time to cover some of these staggered, staggering motions because it's the staggering motions that really make it. But like this is, let me just see what's happening with his head here, because I've got to check the arc. Don't want to get that arc wrong. Okay, so yeah, the head is traveling back, and that's a slow out. Okay, so this is a slow out. So I'll explain all these post-to-post -pose rules to you. There's so much to explain in this breakdown. I might not be able to do the juicy bits with the staggered take. I can just go between the post-to-post. -pose. But, um... What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the rabbit on top so you're going to see how the drawing comes in, in, into it as well. And then we're going to talk about the movements. We're going to analyze the movements. So I'll see how much time and how long I can go, go on streaming for. And, you know, then we're going to be... Th then I'll see if there's time to talk about certain things. But this, this is crazy. Zany crazy. You know, it's... it's uh, you know... I didn't think it would be possible to to go further, but this is Tex Avery on steroids. <laughs> you know, this is absolutely um, crazy stuff. You know, um, so now obviously because of the nature of Roger Rabbit, everything had to be on ones. But I think Richard Williams had a preference to do things on ones anyway, all the time. Now, it could be argued by some, and, you know, I, I, I tend to think that, yes, I kind of agree, but, you know, this is great regardless, so it's, it's just a matter of preference that sp sometimes scenes like this work better on twos, um, and that's what thirds, where thirds is real strength are, and that's thirds, whole thirds timing thing. For those of you who understand thirds, um, uh, it was a way of getting a more poppy, interesting kind of movement. So having the, the lesser frames um, made it more snappy and less flowy. But you know what? This is great regardless. So I think a good animator uh, is always going to be able to convey the effect they so wish. Uh, providing they've mastered those rules and they can do it... Um, anyway whatsoever this is going to be very interesting when we draw in the character to talk about the the expressions because i'm just making a shape uh shape pass at the moment so i can uh when we start drawing in the the character um i can do it a lot easier because i've got something to go along i've, I've worked out all my arcs so i'm studying <laughs> look at the look at the posing look how it's all following the line such a so nice 
so nice and like we've got a triangle here i'll i'll elaborate on this so this is a little triangle here and within these two triangles we're just gonna break it up with these crazy feet like this so like we're gonna have one there we're gonna put one there like this and then this is gonna come here like this oh it's so much appeal going on here oh, i mean it's just i'm having so much fun um so if if Richard's in the sky um, right now uh, and he's feeling some positive energy, um, that's me, Richard. I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm basically reveling in this work. I'm just absolutely loving it. You know, as I said, I don't know if he particularly animated this scene, but he would have had a say in it. I'm pretty sure because you know just looking at it it's you know I see the milk Carl influence milk Carl tends to he loves triangles and he loves shapes that kind of go in those every study I've made you kind of see those kind of things happening and you know with these M and dub that's why I love W poses and M poses um, so you, I can see that in there, but I can also see from the timing and the way the character is drawn, it's a little bit different to what the Disney people do. So uh, even if this wasn't particularly animated by him, um, I can pretty much sure say that he would have had a say in in wh what what it what the poses were had to look like and and. Um, whatever because it is I can feel the difference from the studies that I make from the the the, the classic uh, Disney style so now the tongue is rolled up <laughs> and his eyes and head have got super super big super 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 big hair like this and his nose so he's not afraid about volume changing at all because that's the style you know that's the style of the whole cartooning thing there like this so then this stretch squash and stretch is going to be these are the 12 laws all or, or you know completely spelled out <laughs> you know this this one drawing here you know it has squash and stretch it has exaggeration it has appeal it has solid drawing you know it has arcing um you know there well the arcing the uh, timing the you know the post to pose the primary secondaries all of those um you'll have to see in motion you know uh the follow through the overlap the um the anticipation you know all of those other laws you'll have to see as we watch it moving over but uh but this is this is a, a very very fun image Right, so these are what I have at the moment. These are just the keys, no breakdowns, okay? No breakdowns, but we can already see. So what I always tell to people, okay? Um, uh, I'm gonna just have a look at the chat in a minute because I'm reading, I'm, I'm, I'm actually got my other screen is, is showing me the reference that I'm seeing, but we can actually see that even with just the keys, and I always tell this to people learning, that it, if it works, it has to work at this stage. If, it, if you feel you need to see in-betweens, then it's not going to work, okay? I always tell this to people. It has to work at this stage, okay? You have to see everything you want to see at the key stage, even without the breakdowns, okay? There's, there's no breakdowns here okay there is no breakdowns this could be the most the most likely breakdown this one to this one okay because that's an extreme but i differentiate between keys and extremes okay the extremes are the extreme poses so this is a key first key but this is an extreme this is an extreme this is an extreme this is an extreme okay this is a key this is an extreme okay this is this is an extreme this is a key this is a key the extreme is when you get to that particular point that you're going at the most extreme point. The key is still a key frame. The breakdown is then going to define the arc and where the placements of those keys, you know, um, how the uh, keys and breakdowns, it's a framework, are going to flow. The in-betweens just make up the betweens, okay? 
So before I start drawing, I've got a comment here. It's this so sad. I rewatched a video talking about him a few days ago. It was surprised he was still around. He truly was an artist. Yes, I heard. You know, if 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 I'm gonna go, I would love to go the way he went. Not with cancer. That's very sad. But he went. Apparently, he went slumped over his desk while drawing. You know, um, I almost shed a tear when I read that because I just think that's beautiful. Um, but um, if you know doing what you love to the very end you know that's just absolutely beautiful and uh so yeah um I, it's funny because before coming online i was looking for what can i do to honor the great man and um i found all these uploads from kids tv's programs at the time where he was appearing on kids tv some of you might know who philip schofield is some of you most of you won't if you're stateside um but i was i saw that interview when it was when it was originally live and the memories came flooding back um like it was yesterday because uh you know, I moved on, you know, when you're a child, you tend to, however strong a character you are, you tend to follow the trends and animation was big and Don Bluth came with Dragon's Lair and then there was, um, you know, the 90s with Aladdin and then all those guys became my heroes and I moved on. Uh, and But Richard Williams planted the seed, I have to say, um, planted the seed uh, for me that really helped me. Now I'm going to change to bitmap because I think drawing in bitmap will be a little bit nicer. Um, so I'm just adding some bitmap layers. And then I will do that. So just bear with me. So, so definitely he planted the seed in me and then I went on and I've gone on and I was influenced by other style. Like my biggest influence I would have to say would be Don Bluth's drawing and animation style. Although I, I tend to have a preference to the Disney uh, stuff. Right. So now let's, let's, uh, let's increase my brush size so we can make something out of this. Bring the opacity down a little bit and make something out of this. Right, so now let's talk about the character's construction. So we got a bean-shaped head like this. And the most important thing to know is that along here comes the eye line. You could, you could have it like going like this, um, because, but because in here is where we're gonna frame all the face, okay? And then there's a middle line. I don't wanna make it too constructed, uh, but, but in that middle line is where you know we're going to create some dimension and that's where his eyes are now he's got these overlapping eyes okay so his eyes are i'm gonna be slow on this one and then i'm gonna speed up otherwise we're gonna be here forever so his eyes are gonna be here like this and then you know classic stuff around basically the eyes is exactly where the eyebrows are going to go and he's got some wrinkles and folds there to give him that now we've got a circle, okay, a circle that comes here like this, okay, a circle that comes here, and then on top of that circle is, obviously we can make that a sphere if we want to and add dimension to it, but we can put our nose, which is going to sit on here like this, and then here we're going to have all kinds of bumps and lumps like that, okay. So um, hopefully I can speed up. We'll see if this is the case, then I might not be able to do the in-betweens and we'll just look at the keys and study the keys, which you'll learn a lot from anyway. So now look at the angle this is going in. The bottom tooth is going to come off there like this. And then we're going to have the mouth. See how the mouth fits in nicely with that bean shape there like that. Let's just put that in like this so you see once once you understand all this drawing it in uh, and once you learn the the way to draw uh, which is through shapes and silhouette you know it's a lot very there's a lot of counterintuitive there's a lot of good souls on the internet that try to help people by but but they're primarily illustrators and they tend to get get you to want to focus on the little details if you've noticed as i've blocked out this i've looked at the big the bigger picture i've looked at the shape as a whole of the character and then i'm looking for shapes within shapes now okay so it's very important a lot of people say don't draw boundaries don't draw outlines 
That's well, that's the way Milk Hall drew. Uh, yeah, but there's a caveat to it because the thing is, you need to know all of the anatomy and all of the structure. You need to be a very, very strong, competent draftsman to work effectively uh, this way because but it will help you in the long run because if you're all the time just trying to do the tiny little shapes you're not looking at the overall flow and that's what separates the animator the animator who can see the bigger picture and just look at the outline and and isn't worried about drawing in these the the little details because drawing is just not an issue um for them they they, they really don't have anything to worry about they know where everything goes they know the angles they know the shapes they understand how to manipulate those shapes then it's going to be a very very relaxing easy time for you you just focus on the outlines um, and then worry about the the little details later so you see how there we've got now I'm gonna show you what I mean by illustrating it see well, what I did is I drew this triangle hair like this okay so I drew this triangle like this okay and the triangle almost comes to the floor now I know that there's a middle center line here from the perspective he's got a side contour line here I don't want to turn it into three-dimensional shapes so just for your own thing he's got a side contour and then the middle contour would come down here so just by that I know that I can I can very easily just put this um, I don't know what these things are called, these kind of dungaree things. These I'll call them Super Mario Brother tops. I don't know. Mickey Mouse had them, I guess, before Super Mario. So, um, so but because this middle line is in my subconscious, I understand it. I don't need to draw it. But if you need to draw it, if you feel the need to draw it, then that's fine, you know. But then as time passes and you start to get more confident uh, in, in your ability and in your work, then you understand now let's look at this okay so we, what we have here is we literally have this kind of silhouette like this now what does that mean okay well we just basically break it up so we just do this we do this and then we do this okay and then what happens is, is we have the hand shape and how do we balance it off we just put a little thumb in there like that so that's the way he does the hand shape it's all managed within these shapes which really really help you now some people are so illustrative that they just don't even think and I watched Richard Williams drawing Roger live on a on a on a TV show and that's where I said all the mem memories came flooding back and I don't even think he would have drawn the way that I'm drawing here now thinking animation shapes he would have understood it but he was such an illustrator at heart that I think he naturally just would draw the hand and it would naturally work in in accordance to to the rules which is what why um why uh why he does it so well now here we've got the the feet now i can't see the feet are cut off at the bottom of the screen so i'm just going to do something like that now i'm going to speed up on the next few ones hopefully i've given you some kind of uh, of insight into how it all how it all gets put together and now I'm going to go off and, and and work a little bit faster and explain what's happening in animation law wise so so that's that's that you see when it comes to drawing a lot of people let their personal taste um, determine whether something's a good drawing or a bad drawing now I I sort of I'm going to be quite honest when I started getting really really more heavily into the disney like the traditional disney stuff like aladdin and, you know um uh, beauty and the beast and hunchback and those kind of films i would look at richard williams and i'd go i oh, you know i don't really think he draws as good as those guys but then when i matured a bit and I understood that actually, you know, much as though I love that those Disney drawings and they they're amazing and they're they're very very strong, and I'm I'm not taking back what I say about them. 
what it is is there's a lot of formula in those drawings okay because they have to be reproduced by a lot of people and there's the same for Roger Rabbit you know and all that there, there's formula but what separates say the Glenn Keens uh, the Andreas Dejas the Eric Goldbergs is the, the the guys who are the supervising animators they work the formula out and their drawings when you look at their drawings they're very different to the model drawings that the cleanup department end up having to put it on model that they're, they're almost actually off model even though they're the guys who designed the characters and what happens is, is when you're young and when you're learning you tend to start thinking professional I want my drawings to look professional professional so you learn these formulas and then you start drawing in a very formulaic way and then all that I'm seeing, all you tend to start seeing and appreciating is that particular formula. You know, oh, well, I mean, that's how to do a Disney eye. And that's a good way of doing the eye because it looks professional. And, you know, um, and all that kind of thing. But then as time passes and you realize that the formula is, is really simple and nothing special, then you're not as easily impressed. Um, and then you start to go back and realize that some of these guys like Richard Williams he's actually a real artist you know because he understands those formulas he understands how to draw like that but he just doesn't want to you know and whether I prefer that way of drawing to his personal way of drawing is my business not his inability to do it you know so I, I, I actually grew up um, uh, because there was a phase in my life where I was a little bit like some of these anime people who I talk to online and when I talk to them I feel like I'm talking to my younger self but of course I was more into Disney than, than anime so that's why I'm extra hard on them because I often say that when I give my videos make my video lectures I tend to just who's my target audience my younger self an animation not who wanted to be as good as he could be wanted to be the best okay I don't now I understand that best is different best is the best you can be but when you're young and egotistical you want to be the best okay so I could tap into that and I want to communicate to those people now let's look at what's going on here look this is this is um, this is an anticipation key okay so there's hardly any movement at all uh, it's a slowing it's a the spacing we're literally gonna slow into this into this movement but what we're doing here is we're throwing in some squash and stretch okay because he's looking up but he's also you know he's looking up but actually I don't know because I'm referring it's difficult for me to go from one screen to the next I'm gonna just do this what I intuitively think he might be stretching but I don't think these things would stretch okay I don't think these things so he's stretching a little bit as he's rising and his hands are raising a little bit to anticipate the big move okay so there's gonna be a big move so we not only anticipate in movement okay by bringing things up a little bit and stretching him a little bit we're also anticipating in um, spacing so the drawings are a lot closer together look at the way the thumb kind of changes a little bit like that that's kind of interesting there so the anticipation is happening so this hand is coming back okay the arm has gone behind see now a lot of the time and this is what get lost when you get so you know in order to break the rules you got to understand the rules so anatomy is super super important but then when you want to push push it so the elbow has gone behind the body right the elbow has gone behind the body uh, and the um, anatomy is not exactly 100 percent there but that's okay what we're looking for is appeal in silhouette and that's where the other law comes in exaggeration and appeal so when you want to cheat your drawings when you want to cheat your anatomy you got to understand um, that it's got to it's got to still work now we've cheated that but 
we can see that it's still an appealing drawing. We're not looking at it going, oh God, the hand doesn't work there. You know, we're, we're just looking at it and appreciating, yeah, he's looking, his elbow could somewhat be like this, or, you know, if, it's, if, if it was out, we might have seen it there, you know, but it might, it's not, it doesn't really clear, uh, help the silhouette. Now, I'm just gonna trace back my feet so it doesn't wobble and slide all over the place. And I'm just going to do that there like this. So we have this. So there's an anticipation up like this. And his ears are stretching. Okay. They're growing in size like this. Okay. So we have this. Now we've got a huge, huge move um, that we've got going on. Sarah, the software is of no consequence. Okay. Um, it's of no consequence. I'm using storyboard software. I could be using paper. All I'm doing is drawing and moving forwards and backwards. Okay. Uh, that's all I'm doing. It's of no consequence to the work. Right. So now there's going to be a big move. So we're going to, we're going to, even if we go fast, once I draw this in, you're going to see just by having these two frames so close together, this is still going to work because we're going to make a big, big shift. Now let's look at the squash and stretch in the head and the angle of the head and what's happening. So we've got this shape, right? And this is going to come right down here. Ooh, it looks like a bit like a naughty shape, but you know, there we go. Now in here is the nose is going to sit in here like this. And we're going to put in a few lines like that. And on there, we're going to have the eye line. So we're going to have a down angle of his head his eyes are going to be closed like this okay and his eyebrows are going to be down so we've got an angry expression now studying this my tendency would be to squash the head but he's kind of stretched the head because he wants to show the drag as his head going down this way and he also wants to uh, cheat the illusion that we can see the top of his head which is just it's just it's just you just put the nose down there and he's closed the eyes and how he's helping the angle is he's got his cheeks continuing the law of drag coming here like this so these cheeks are coming at the side there like that and he's got some whiskers which I missed out on the other frames but they kind of help with this with the motion so now the drag thing comes so what we have here is we have this huge we have this triangle shape okay which we've got and that's how we can frame the ears nicely and manage the ears if we go into the middle of the triangle okay we can have it constructed like this okay so i'm not going to use my rough in particular there i'm going to more go over to my um, let's turn that off for a second um, going to go over more to my more worked out things so you see now we have this very, very graphic shape. And now we're going to throw in some hair to break it up. Okay, so the hair will break it up. We're layering shapes on top of shapes. Just like that. This thing is going to come through here like this. You see how we start layering it and then we can hide those shapes a little bit better. Right, so now we've got, we've got, now we're going to have some squash on the body. So look what's going to happen, okay? We're going to have this round shape coming here like this. To sh suddenly his knees are, are, have come into play, okay? And then we're going to have the same thing on the other side, okay? And his feet are more or less planted where they are. So we've got this kind of thing going on so his feet are more or less planted right right there like that and his body has changed and now we're going to cheat that angle by bringing his uh, trouser um, things in and squashing on his bow tie so it's a real extreme i would never personally squash a drawing like this so i'm learning something here like this i mean i don't go this cartoony uh, I thought Eric Goldberg was uh, super, super cartoony, but this is something 
even more extreme than what I've seen from my studies of his work. Okay, so this this is uh, this is where the M pose comes into place. So now now look what what stops this M pose from looking flat. Let me just put the arms in. All right. What stops the M pose from looking flat? Okay is what we're going to do is we're going to change the angle of the hand so look how this if this was like this it would be flat okay so we have the angle of the hand change like this okay and then we're going to just make a shape like this so I'm, I'm going a little bit away from what my original uh rough was then we're going to put one there like that and we're just going to make a fist out of it like that he's got these little three things on top of his glove there like that so you see how we're, how we're adding some dimension to it like this. And again, less so here. We're going to put this down here like this. And then we're going to have this coming like this. Okay, so this is going to come around. And we're going to see that. Okay. So there we are. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the rough ones underneath so we can we can have a better understanding so now if we look at that okay if I just scrub and drag you'll see that even if I'm you see you you can make it out you can make out the movement before just by that little close key the pose to pose that key that really shows us what the spacing and the timing this is timing so we're going to get from hair to hair. I might throw in one breakdown. I might, might not be able to do all the juicy bits in between with the with the coming in and out of this pose. But because um, he kind of staggers into this and staggers into this. But we're going to, I might throw in a few breakdowns. So let's keep going. I'll just have a, a brief look. My Facebook chat tends to be a lot quieter than my YouTube chat. So yeah, nobody's really said anything. So that's good it just I guess it just means we can continue on with the um, with the lecture so now I'm gonna go on to the next pose um, which is gonna be this one uh, yeah this this we want the mouth more open yeah that's the first one that's the key that's the key he hits right so what we have when we come up is we want to think again the shape of the head is interesting now because we have the top which is this is where anatomy comes in we've got the calvira and then we've got the mandible okay so we we go one way and the other way okay so the the nose is going to sit on the top of the where the calvara the the skull portion of the of the rabbit is and then the jaw is very very accurate to anatomy it's funny it's such a over over the top cartoon character so we now go big on the eyes and then we're gonna really talk about the expression change because so now his eyeballs have gotten bigger here because obviously we want to emphasize what he's seeing his eyes are almost out of their things his eyebrows are on top look they're in line with this here like this and what is interesting um, now we just do a line underneath there uh, and that'll help us find our zygomatic which is the cheek you see I can talk in anatomical terms here because everything is correct okay in spite of that being a cartoon character and mr. Williams was um, was a stickler for anatomy so then this comes around here like this to create a nice crease and fold and squash and stretch in the skin now here's the extreme stretch of the mouth but the jaw okay is gonna come under here like this now it's super super thin like this the jaw is gonna come here like this and we're just gonna come in and round it off with this shape here like that and have that coming through there then on here we've got the tongue sticking out which is over this way like this okay so a straight bottom line and a curve on top so all the curves and straight rules are taking place there I'm just gonna do that to make it clear that his mouth is indeed open right so then we've got his neck which is coming in like this 
which kind of threw me a bit. So we can see that from here, from here, we can go from here to here. We have these the extremities of the character's face, right? Now, a nice thing is we're keeping the squash and stretch. We're keeping it stretched in the ski. So we've gone ramrod straight up there like that. And everything is ramrod straight. So that is off camera, that, right? Now this is following the line of the back. Everything is following this line, okay, which comes here like this. And we have his butt, which comes up here. But look how the line continues on, okay? Just the butt breaks it up a little bit, okay, like that. But the line continues on. So it all follows that line of action, like that, right? Then from here we have the the you know we can separate it with another triangle that's exactly how i worked it out so when i scribbled it in i had his trouser triangle but his arm basically comes along there so this is a little structure structure tip if you want to improve your hand eye coordination you want to look what uh, for the major shapes and the major anatomical aspects of your subject matter if you're doing life drawing or whatever and then you want to see how they relate to each other. Are they within the same line? Are they parallel? Are they not parallel? Um, and so you can see his arm is almost resting within there for this for the sake of the silhouette. Then we've got this one coming down here and coming over here like this, um, where there'll be more squash and stretch in the feet. So you see how this harmony, this triangular shape is, is a big deal. You know, we're stretching his, his this section here. So this is coming up. Then we have this foot, which balances out nicely. See at the, how it, it's just off, off this line a little bit. Now we're gonna, we can just make a little shape on top like that. That's gonna help us get this correct, okay? And this is going to turn the other way like that and then we put in a line at the side and we can go ahead and have our um, feet from underneath and uh, give it dimension so again here we just want to fit everything now look at the triangle shape here okay we want to fit everything within that that's you want to talk about appealing poses and all those kind of things. Now I've got slightly gone off there. I don't like using the eraser, but um, I think in this case it needs that. So you want to talk about appealing poses um, and things like that. Um, what it is, is you really, this is goes back to what I was talking about at the beginning. You want to think about the bigger picture. Okay, we don't even see his other arm. The tail is fluffed up, okay? It's really, really uh, squash and stretch going on here. So the tail has come up here, but the tail is not really that important uh, compared to what I'm talking about. You wanna look at the bigger picture, okay? So when I started, I wasn't drawing his facial expressions. I wasn't drawing any of that. I'm just gonna get my vector thing and I'm just gonna get a red so you can see what I mean. Um, the bigger picture here is this, okay? It's triangle. That's the bigger picture. And then there's another triangle within there, okay? And then you can separate that triangle up. In the middle is where his nose is, okay? I'm just improvising on my theory here. And there, it's amazing how it all adds up, okay? You've got a either side of the triangle his nose is in the middle and then right down the middle is where you know the drawing breaks up you know it's just i didn't even expect it to be that perfect i was just trying to talk about the shapes okay maybe as i scribbled it out i'm going to do it with a big clear thing for you okay middle line okay triangle okay we can say that it ends there Okay, now we look at the triangle there, okay? I mean, it's just literally, you know, everything about this. You know, that's where you can, hidden milk cow, 
I'm I'm just blown myself away from making this study right now. I didn't expect I didn't expect to see something like that. I didn't expect to see something like that from a drawing that I just made making the study. It's just remarkable. Um, I myself am learning. Thank you, Richard. Thanks for the lesson. <laughs> Thank you. Even though you've gone away. Um, amazing. Amazing. I didn't expect to see it work out. It's what I'm always preaching. But I didn't expect to see um, see that happening uh, just yet. Uh, somebody says, why are we here and not YouTube? Because I haven't... Why should it be exclusive to YouTube? YouTube don't give me the love I deserve, quite frankly. Um, you know, I've had more people joining uh, Real Animator Training from Facebook than YouTube, to be honest with you. Why should why exclusively YouTube? You know, I, I, I I've got a I've got a lot of different people on lots of different um different uh channels, uh social media channels who like my stuff. And I haven't been on Facebook for a while. And this is for my Facebook people, the eight thousand people on Facebook who have um very kindly subscribed to my channel, so why not? You know? I was on YouTube yesterday. Maybe I might upload this to YouTube at some other point. But I'll tell you what, my latest YouTube stream has only got 700. And for YouTube, you know, only 700 views. While some kid who's just made a video of why I became an animator with a, with a really shitty thumbnail has almost a million. So YouTube bring it on themselves. You know, I've no love for it. I, I, you know, I've got love for the people on YouTube, but ah, why should I? This is for Facebook. Okay, right. So this, now we're going to focus on this thing. Uh, this guy turning onto the next extreme with the eyes bulging out. So what we want to think about is, is how are we going to, before we get lost in the expression and all the theory and all that, we want to think about the, um, the manageable things. Okay, so it's head. Okay, so what's the guy's head doing okay so the guy's head is going to be coming back we're literally going to be holding what are the what are the consistents okay there's going to be a big change but what are the things that are going to remain more or less the same so his mouth is going to remain more or less the same okay so this is his head is coming back and we're, we're pretty much keeping that pretty much in the same vein okay so this is this is going to be coming back and his nose is going to be there now there's a big big change up where what with what's on top of his nose so that's why i'm kind of being a little bit loose on this because i'm making the study for myself just as much for myself as it is for you guys so the tongue is going to be here right so that's the consist uh, the constant thing okay now we've actually see a little bit of the other cheek behind there which is amazing now the hair is even going to remain the same in a in a stretch like this okay and that goes there like this okay and this one comes back here like that right so there we go and now the big difference is going to be the eyes okay so now what this is as i said i what i've learned is roger is triangular everything about roger is triangular so i'm going to make a big triangle here and i'm going to just insert another little triangle there and that's how we're going to um going to get that eye shape now i'm going to rub that out purely because i want to be clear about this eye so you can see how he's made he's made one bit and he's framed the other eye inside okay to give it dimension like that now let's draw this in okay so this is quite you know this is quite bizarre okay um, so they almost look like something else something that anime fans might be excited about but um, his eyes have kind of like the pupils are almost coming out of their you know shooting out of the iris there like that and then we're going to have the rounded of the eye now what's good is now we can just rest the nose on there which is all triangular triangular okay uh, this comes in here now this mouth is a triangular okay which comes like this i'm gonna 
imagine that this is probably going to open wider this mouth so I'm going to push it a little bit okay push the squash and stretch on that so that comes back like that the tongue sticks out more okay within there like that so although there's a big big change up in the eyes you can see that there's not much of a change up in everything else okay so that's what's keeping it constant so uh, a bigger animator who's probably trying to do something wacky and crazy and outlandish they're probably going to put too much change okay so the eye won't know where to look so if you put a little bit of change like this like one major change not a, you know but the rest is very very slight then it's going to be fine and then what happens here is, is then we're going to just continue on with the line of this okay so we've got this straight line going on here like this so then again we're going to break it up with the butt okay which comes here like this I, he had a little patch on his butt there i must have missed that in the previous one and then we're going to have this other thing coming here which is going to be the triangle of the leg okay which is all going to fit in this as i mentioned in this kind of triangle thing here but i'm not going to draw that in because uh, now now blended in with the neck shape is where his hand okay is coming here like that so we're really keeping things in line here with just his bow tie okay oh i just noticed this i missed his bow tie on the previous one i'm gonna have to go back and um look at that because it's important to see what happens to his bow tie so on the first shot we were doing his bow tie was under his chin so it's a his bow tie is beginning to come off his face which is hilarious okay like that now um on this one here let me go back to my referencing um my pleasure sergio um my pleasure hervonia baker thank you so much thank you it's my pleasure i'm also learning from this i'm learning from the great man uh so it's we're learning together which is really exciting so now we're gonna come back here and we're gonna have a look that was the extreme i was using yep so everything is in line there now the bow tie is what every time i say bow tie i think of forrest gump the bow dog so i don't know why it's gonna come somewhere here like this okay like this and it's shoot under you see what's amazing is just how you know everything oh my god i can't wait to show you this oh my god now i'm now i've found out about that triangle thing i'm beginning to see even more the shapes just however look at this people look at this <laughs> how how cool is that how no how cool is that okay right so the bow tie has come out there like that okay so that shoots out you see the harmony of the shapes is just incredible i tell you what i had respect for richard williams before but as i said you know sometimes we tend to just focus on the things that we are now my my butt is a little bit out of place here but my drawing's close enough it's not exact um sometimes we tend to focus on the things that we like so i focus on the don bluths the john pomeroy's the glenn Keens, you know the james baxter's the andreas Tejas, and you know i kind of you know but i tell you what my respect for richard williams is because even if he didn't animate the scene i know as a directing animator i've done it myself if you've got a particular style um you will go over the other animators drawings or you will go over their poses and tell them what to do even if they're a really strong animator you have your way of doing things and you like to see things that way and when you're given that position so i know that he would have gone over this guy's drawings and said or the guy would have had to refer to his key is kind of like rough because he's a chuck jones fan as well and chuck jones would block out all you know he, all, he, all his animators would refer to the 
poses that he would do in the layouts and stuff like that. So this Strauser is actually more like this. So I, my respect for Richard Williams has, you know, just doubled from just doing this particular um, particular scene here. You know, it's, it's just amazing, okay, to see the shape choices, the, 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 the balancing and harmony about, of the shapes and silhouettes. You know, this is, this is silhouette stuff is going... Uh, you know, insane here, insane in regard to what, what, what the amount of thought, like we're, we're just looking at this drawing, but I know he would have worked and worked these poses to get those silhouettes to be doing what they're doing. So people just don't realize how much work goes into a simple cartoon drawing like this. They just think it's a cartoon, you know, and they then they look at you know, they look at some generic anime face with a, because it's the style they like, you know, um, and with some shading, some stiff ass muscles, and they think that that's a, a, a remarkable piece of draftsmanship. I don't think people realize, and that's exactly why I'm doing what I'm doing, because I didn't even realize how good Roger was. Bloody hell. I mean, I think real people realize just how much effort goes into perfecting these shapes in order for this stuff to work so nice as it does. So you see, there's not much of change going on there with the exception of this, okay? That's all that's happening. We're just like this pose and this pose are so similar, right? So this and this is a slowing, okay? We're just, we're going to slow into this pose, but I can't, don't have time to do it on... Let's see how long the stream has been going on for. We've been going on for an hour already, so I don't really have time to be doing it because there's a big staggered movement, uh, you know, between hair and hair. Um, but we are essentially staying around this pose for a long amount of time, and we're staying around this, for, and then we're quickly transitioning between them like that. Okay, so that's exactly, this could be like the, the up, the contact, the down, the pass position, the up okay this literally illustrates everything about mr williams's walk cycle theory of how if you can do a walk you can do anything this is it right so now let us move on to this particular position okay let me turn off the under drawings so i don't get distracted so now this one could see is a, is a key it's kind of like a pass position and it's the arc so what's happening here is now now this this triangle here okay if you want to say is now becoming a triangle like this in the head watch okay this is just amazing so i i'm Ad libbing my like I didn't plan this lecture. I didn't study this stuff before. Okay, um, I, I'd love to say that I have the time to do that to put into my live streams, but I don't. I just say okay. I have streamed on YouTube yesterday. I'm in the back of my mind. My Facebook people have been neglected for a while. I really need to seem stream something exclusive for them that maybe that isn't just uploaded from YouTube. So I just come online and say, okay, let me study some Richard Williams. I wasn't ever planning to study it. As I said, you know, um, I'm, I'm just more kind of obsessed with the Milk Carl stuff and, and those stuff guys of late. So, but obviously in light of his passing, I said, it'll be a nice thank you gesture and it'll be a nice stream for, we've all got Richard Williams in common. And so let's just study some Richard Williams. I, and I'm so glad that I did. So thank you, Facebook people, for, in a way, forcing me to do this. Um, I'm so glad that I did because I'm learning so much. And I'm already starting to see these shapes now, which I didn't see before. And I'm beginning to see these things. And as I'm teaching them to you, what's happening is, is I'm, I'm discovering them for the first time myself. Uh, because I always talk about the secret science of shape simplification, which is the system that I teach in real animator training in order to make you a better draftsman and animator. But um, of course, um, I like to study masters to so that I can share the things that I've learned. And I've just taken my understanding of my own system, the secret science of shape simplification, I've taken it 
even further now by by studying this and I'm really starting to see see amazing shapes in this uh, that I that I didn't see when I originally blocked it out at the very beginning of the video I was just relying on the usual shapes that I look for but this is just incredible to, to think of the head like that it's just amazing so now we're just resting this this is a good way of keeping volume as well you just have understand your um, your placements so this is coming through here like this and the tongue is getting longer so you see as he's going back the tongue is staying remaining out it's the one constant thing that stays in there for us to see um, the hair is moving this way so there's going to be some drag okay here the ears are remaining ramrod straight okay which makes it super super easy for me to to put that in but the triangle look at that it's almost like he's being hung hung on ha, hung on something it's just r insane absolute insane cartooning right so then we have the uh, dungarees here now let's look at the placement of the bow tie okay so the bow tie is coming back on itself and it's changed dimension so we've got something like this okay so we've got this so as he's changing dimension the bow tie is changing dimension obviously the bow tie has got spots on it but i'm not getting caught up with all that um, now i'm getting involved in details here Biuli, because i'm trying to make sure everything's in the right place let's go back to the shape and then we'll break it down and look at the triangle again okay i bet you can uh, guys after i've pointed that out i bet you can see the triangle okay i bet you you can see the triangle in this drawing if you can't see my rough drawing then wait you definitely will see the triangle okay so this is coming here like this coming home they're framing the triangle almost okay the hand is out here now look how we have this hand is made out of triangles okay so we have this triangle here this triangle here okay resting in here this one resting in here and then another little triangle underneath it to make that third finger over there like that and then we just have a triangle here okay i'll just show you why because we have the thumb to frame it like that you see how the secret science of shape simplification can be applied to drawing as well um, uh, because this is drawing for animation is very different to drawing for illustration but you know even illustrators can benefit from the secret science of shape simplification so this is coming through here like this around here like that we're going to have this we're going to have this and this coming through well, so then we're going to frame it with his butt and which is coming here and his tail so now you surely must be able to see that triangle okay then in here we're going to have this foot coming up here like this now my drawing is a little off but i'm just going to leave it because i've been kind of sticking with my rough for speed purposes it doesn't have to be perfectly in the right place uh, everything kind of works so now just very quickly let's look because i'm intrigued i'm intrigued let's look obviously we've got this one okay look how the foot is in line with the middle so obviously we've got that one right we've got this one which we've talked about okay we've got this one okay we've got this one okay um i think that's probably it we talked about the triangles in within here okay we talked about those okay right so we have those right so i think that's probably it but you see how it is you know all coming together like that now i'm going to move on to the next frame and we're going to have a look at that and i might have time to throw in some um some breakdowns so what is it is this one is that the one yeah and then we go super big so i just need to figure out what we have so we have this 
Oh yeah, then he goes into the super big one. So before the stagger, he starts staggering again. So what happens is he goes he goes into this and then he starts staggering again into something even bigger. Okay, so here we get a big head volume. The the head is grown intentionally in size, okay? So we're going to have to talk about that, okay? Now, I, I can't remember if it was in fact from Richard Williams's book or from The Illusion of Life, the two of the greatest uh, publications and most helpful books you're ever going to find for learning animation. Um, they talked about Milk Carl, um, or it uh, might have been Frank Thomas or Ollie Johnson, um, talking about squash and stretch and talking about how the elasticity of everything uh, grows and shrinks and all that kind of stuff uh, but what they did say um, is they said they try to keep it looking like it's the same piece of meat you know so even though Roger's head okay has grown insanely big okay there is a logic to it you know it no one's head can grow and stretch like that that's fine we need go and think that literally okay but the logic is his head it's the same head you know that same head can only go so far and he's pushed it as far as it can go or seemingly it goes even further on the next one but the way he sold that image to you is by staying within the character's construction. Okay? Now, when I say construction, I don't mean the construction of the way this, there's a sphere and a thing here like that. And, and we see each dimension and all that, you know. In a way, yes, but more so that the the way the character is put together, okay, the shapes, okay, the shapes within the shapes, okay, it's all about how those shapes work. Now, I've had to kind of rough this expression again because I want to get it right because I want to talk to you about how it works, okay. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to just really, really, we see how we're literally all on this one line coming around here is where everything is going to like his back of his ear his jaw everything is all in harmony with that one flowing line you see it's coming there like this then we have this triangular thing coming here which will frame the top skull but we'll talk about that later we're going to focus on the lower jaw at the moment okay so this is all coming together meeting in there and it's framed by the chin and the jaw bone which comes here like this now what we have here is we have the tongue again i've been i'm a little bit off but i'm working quick i'm making my studies for the first time i've since i was 11 years old i thought i was nine but the dates didn't add up probably 11 when i did that uh study <laughs> okay so this is the first time since then i've been i'm making a study of this okay so um I'm going to be a little bit out, but, uh, but, but more or less, hopefully you'll see everything is kind of adding up as it should be. So now within here, you see that whole triangle business and how there's, you know, the eyes are sitting in a triangle um, pointing upwards, the um, maxilla or his foremouth, his snout is sitting in, a, in another triangle like that. So we have this, the eyes really make it, so the eyes are actually coming out of the, there like that. So you see how it all hangs off there now to frame it. Now we flop the hair down because where he's gone up, he's up and now he's coming back on himself. So it's an opposing action. So as he's this way, everything like his hair and his ears are this way. Now as he's gone this way, his ears have gone this way. Okay, his jaw has gone this way. Okay, it was the other way okay as he was going that way for the triangle to happen this way so now he's going this way okay okay so let's we see a little bit of that side he's got whiskers I don't 
they would have been done afterwards so I'm not really so interested in them um, so now we're gonna focus on the um, the bow tie again I don't want to get caught up in the details but for the sake of the stream for the I'm just making sure I don't miss out these little things the bow ties up there right so now what we're going to think about is we're going to think about imagine this flowing line from the jaw coming all this way what do we get so we've got this line which is going to keep keep us going here like this there's a little bit of breakup i'll tell you why in a minute okay and then we've got the the belly coming like this okay but then essentially we're keeping that line going through like that the flow is continuing on through like that and we're going to have that come through there we're going to separate that just like it's got to imagine if it had a middle line you see i just did that and it added up okay so that's where the other trouser leg is going to come now i bet you're gonna you're all seeing the triangles happening now so, since i've pointed it out those of you who are watching okay so this is going to come in here and we're going to literally from the back side okay so from this side we're literally going to come and join that okay like that you see how it all makes a nice shape like that then from here we're going to have the um the jumpsuit or dungaree i don't know what it's called kind of thing there like this okay and the uh, roll-ups the turn-ups so then the hair is is where the underside is coming now the hand and the arm do little other than just stay there to keep in with the bows you see he's not he's not flailing the guy's arms around he's not doing a lot of things with the guy's arm to to make him like really shocked and surprised and an overact like that he's he's doing something really really extreme he's pushing the law of exaggeration via the law of appeal by keeping it you know it I, I hesitate to say it because it's such a big exaggerated movement but by keeping it subtle you know that's that's what he's doing so this is coming like this now there is some indication of his tail here and i can just make out his hand on this side i can't quite make out the way this because this even though this is a i've registered this as a key because the stagger starts afterwards it's not clear you can see another frame along with this one but it is the extremity of the pose so i know it's a key so this is coming here like this and i'm gonna go through the triangles afterwards we all kind of talked about this when i did it at the time the shapes were so within there but what, what i can do is show you how we're adding dimension to the foot just by putting that little underline now there's no underline on this side but then we see an underline on here so look how we can start putting directional changes on the foot you see we've got it there now so this is this side this is this side now we'll have it on this side you see directional changes to make it more dimensional okay so we have that then on this one we're going to bring this through like this and have this come under here with this hair and turning outward like that right so we have something like that so this we have we can see the extremity of that okay taking place uh, you see they're going from one line to the other so now let's look what shapes i can see obviously obviously we got this which we pointed out obviously there is this okay which sits somewhere in there like this oh i've gone and I've go, gone and drawn it in on bitmap i want to draw it in on vector so let's do that again because it's hard to undo it when it's on bitmap so there's this there's this okay there's naturally this okay and if you want to you can put the arm there 
Uh, no, I'm just searching now. I'm just searching. I just think that's it. Okay. So you see how that, how it's a balance between curves and straights. So you see, it's a curved line with straights in it. And that's the secret to this kind of drawing. Um, appealing drawing, balancing curves with straights. It's extremely advanced stuff at this level. So now we're going to do the last key and we're, we're 1 minute 25 minutes in. Um, Carl Manoli, I've never seen Richard's book but the DVDs he released are full of great stuff. I've only skimmed them because I don't want to get ahead of myself before I can properly... Oh, well, well, you've got them, so that's absolutely great. So, fantastic. You've already got a wealth of information there. Akal, Akal the Warrior has turned up. Good to see him online. Now, we have our last extreme pose here. So, what we're going to do is we are going to do that, and there might be some time to put in one or two breakdowns to show you how to dye some of this stuff together now this is this is the this is the extreme extremity so i was talking about putting in but, but what it what it is is if you understand that triangle so remember i said it was a triangle so all that's happening is is the triangle is getting bigger okay that's that's what that's how it's so easy to manage this kind of stuff a lot of people just get so lost in the uh, in the fact that there's some eyes, okay? It really is shapes within shapes. You know, back in the day, there was a show called Thundercats that's been butchered over the years, and now it's been butchered to such a degree that I, I, I hesitate to mention it. Why am I talking about it? Because he always said, Sword of Omens, give me sight beyond sight. Well, uh, my real animator training people, I want them to think they're superheroes or super warriors like Lion King but they will say um, animation skills give me let me see shapes within shapes you know that's what I like to think so you see how it easily manageable it is when you start to think about it like that it's it's not a problem and it's how you manage your volumes people keep thinking look I don't even have the light box on look I mean the light box is not even on okay I'm just looking at shapes okay and that's how I'm able now this is deliberately grown out to the side and has gone all super scraggly for a reason okay and then this has gone off here now what's happened here pure to true true check savory style this is the tongue has rolled in now okay so you see that triangle has just gotten bigger and now this triangle is still here so when I said keep it the same piece of meat it's the same piece of meat now let's just go and and, and just detail it in a bit so so we can you see how I just manage the shapes and now it's just a question of just literally just strengthening some of it you know it's not it really isn't as hard as people really feel think it is I think too many people are just too impatient and they don't want to go through the process and real animated training and even in you know if we're talking about Richard Williams today so even in his survival kit I mean obviously the guy can draw right but then why does he choose you to teach you with just the most simple stick man shape you know um, it's all about the shapes you want to you want to be able to manage simple shapes and once you can manage simple shapes effortlessly you'll be able to do more complicated shapes pretty in a pretty straightforward manner because you'll understand the hierarchy of you know the big main shape the little shape within there and the shapes within them like within the uh, within this diamond of the eyes which is cut in half are two little circles that have two little circles within them to represent eyeballs you know that's literally yes I'm the brain the human brain is amazing it can do so many things so yes I do I'm not thinking in a lifeless soulless way of these are just dead shapes that I'm I'm thinking their eyes but I'm I'm not getting so caught up in the fact that their eyes that I'm losing the plot you know 
and that's what happens to a lot of beginners who are wanting to learn animation they get so caught up in this is my character this is her, this is her you know i want her to look like this and she's really hot and pretty and you know draw i can only draw her face from this angle i don't know how to draw it and it doesn't look like her from that angle and bloody bloody blah blah you know at the end of the day that's that's a lack of ability and a lack of understanding of how to manage shapes and you need to get over that your character or whatever and just understand these main things and then you'll be able to really really start to do your character justice so this thing is these hands are coming up now and everything is kind of like exactly as i said before this is a slow although this is an extreme the previous one is a key it's a slow in process so we're just slowing into this i've just got to watch my arcs here the hands are coming here so here okay we got this is triangle here like this okay and then i'm gonna make another triangle there like that okay you could argue we got a triangle here like this now look how easy it is so we got one coming out here like this okay we're gonna balance that off with this one here so that's this is the first triangle okay so now we've got this one coming in here okay and then this one coming off here like this right so this uses it's not i find hands yes these are cartoon hands but let me tell you something hands are not hard when you understand the secret science of shape simplification they're really not okay they're not especially if you know anatomy and you understand all the bones that make up the hands and the structure of the hands they're not difficult at all it's just a matter of shape understanding now this thing is going to come through here like this along here and ain't no software going to help you with that no it's not this is going to come through here like this and through here now again here so we we can then we can then arc this okay i wouldn't do this arc i'm just teaching you i just would draw it as is okay uh intuitively but so then here there'll be another triangle okay coming here with another one you could could have it coming around here now in line with this okay so then you have this okay so exactly the same thing kind of happening on the other side and from a silhouette point of view that's <laughs> that's a little bit rude but you know there's a lot of controversy about this film but never mind um for things like that right so this uh, triangle comes in here like this okay and this one comes down here and we're having some little bit of really widening crazy feet shape you know squashing and stretching and going mad which i absolutely love so we have something like that there that's a strange shape i bet the leftists who are anti-disney would be claiming some kind of hidden racist symbol in that one uh, good luck to them you know sometimes i think people just look for things but anyway it, they, they haven't said anything to be fair i'm just <laughs> i'm just <laughs> letting my imagination run wild right so we've got this coming here like this and this I had a terrible time at art school where um, I was damned for wanting to learn hand-drawn traditional animation and they were predominantly very hard left teachers um, I've got nothing strictly against the left but it's just had a terrible effect on me at that time where they just called me a sellout and just poo-pooed on anything I did as if it was commercial trash you know, anyway I digress so here we go. I mean, that was one of the problems Richard Williams had when, when he went to art school. He talks about how none of them knew anything about animation. And they were like dumbfounded when he came there. They were like, they couldn't believe it, you know, about drawing. Art school had become something that was anything but an art school. It should have been called a politically inclined school. But anyway, right. So this thing uh goes back into that slow in key like that so we have this you see how he grows and sh grows in tremendous size here so but but this is the scene okay so he he comes around back let's just track out of that so you can see it so we start with a 
a slow out bows to bows we come in with an anticipation down uh, now I love to point this out to all the picks or people I love the W pose I always use it and I love the M pose and I'm in good company because this film was a groundbreaking masterpiece in animation and we see it there and I don't care okay Pixar you might love your little shoulder shrugs and satirical little eyebrow raises you know with your eye darts and your kind of sarcastic expressions and you know have your little character kind of like droop his head and look over his shoulder with his mouth and his little head wiggle and think that's something so original and poo poo on people who use the W pose but I'd rather stick with Mr. Williams thank you very much and I advise anybody who follows me not to be intimidated by anybody who tells you not to do certain things because it's generic we're living in the most generic tired fatigued period in animation I've ever known I thought the Disney musical was generic and tiresome I loved those films but I thought come on it's getting a bit samey now but now you can't get more generic than what where we're at now characters actings and performances are interchangeable so I'm saying it here and now if you don't agree with me fine but from my standpoint use the W pose and use it with pride okay it's appealing it looks good it works great and it's fantastic okay right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and throw in maybe a few um, in-betweens in there <laughs> Beavis and Butthead were always shown facing each other forward or sideways people <laughs> notice that stuff yeah well there you go right so I'm gonna go and I'm gonna I'm not going to be able to do the staggered motions, but I'm going to show you a little bit about the breakdowns. Okay, we've just got keys and extremes here. I can't really do the. I, I'm, I, I, I've been going on for one and a half hours. I don't want this stream to go on for too long. So I'm not going to do the staggered action here. But what I am going to do is I'm going to get from here to here, and I'm going to get from here to here. Okay, but you can see that timing wise, that works anyway. <clears throat> but you might want to understand how to get from there to there because you you can just pop it but obviously you want it to look nice so we're gonna throw in some breakdowns okay so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna throw in some breakdowns and I'm gonna make a study of those breakdowns the, the maestro if indeed it is the maestro I have to point out I'm not 100% sure uh, if he did this scene but we're gonna go and see uh, what the breakdowns were for those poses so I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna have a look so bear with me so right okay so which one do I think so that's the arc of motion that's a nice one that's a nice one and the funny thing is is it's you know what that would be the breakdown <clears throat> and it is the previous so the net the previous drawing to this is the breakdown so the the, the arc is literally is gonna come here and he's spacing okay he slows out so it's clearly on a third okay because we have this head hair this head hair and this is the breakdown so the other one is going to be there and there's going to maybe be an in-between in there I counted it maybe that's what I remember but I'm not interested I'm not studying the timing I'm just studying the space and I'm studying that so let's do that so we know that it's an arc like that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, favor this pose because that's that's the one now I'm going to utilize the <coughs> whole thing of the timing thing and this arm has come up like this okay so look at the arc around there like that that's a great interesting thing so the arm is not just arcing straight the hand is not arcing from hair to hair okay we're not putting one in the middle like that we're going around we're arcing it around like that least that's my understanding from what I can see okay so the same this hand is coming up where the head is coming up like this so again we're not going straight down we're arcing up so the law of arcing so this is a very important um, analysis here the breakdown pose so then <coughs> this is coming here 
the triangle shape of the ears is coming here like this so it's kind of straight like that so we have this the hair is coming up here like this okay so then in the middle okay the nose will be here the bottom of the mouth will be here you see studying the shapes i'm not really caring about the construction so much of the head because i'm just working with these shapes now his eyes are going to be kind of closing like that and his cheeks are going to be up with the drag so we have something like this okay so we have this now here um what do we have okay so we have this triangle is going to turn into his knee okay so his legs are kind of just kind of staying and the knee is coming up here like this okay so this is going to be kind of turning into his knee so this is more or less staying as is right so that's enough about that okay i'm going to draw that in for you now uh so we can we can keep this moving mm -hmm. So let's go in and talk about <coughs> the drawing and the facial expressions. So we're favoring this pose. We're favoring this pose. But I'm gonna I'm gonna look at this one because I I, I think it's a better reference for his head as somebody who doesn't know the Roger model as well and is just focusing on the shapes. I think it's a better reference for me, so I'm gonna favor look at that one up there. So we've got the snout which is coming around here like this which we worked out um with the with this thing coming through and then we have the eyes which come in the middle now the eye shapes are interesting because he's now introducing eye eyelids okay um so he's putting some squash and stretch in there like that and he's keeping the character in a very kind of his eyes are kind of off center so this one's looking there that was this is a zany crazy thing happening there okay right and then we've got his eyebrows which kind of echo the eyelid shape with the furried brow on top so what happens here is now we're framing the mouth within this okay so we're framing the mouth within to change the angle okay the angle is coming like this Okay, so we're changing the angle. We're framing that mouth within there like that. And this is coming, going to come around and frame it. Okay, so now what you can see in here is just a going back. We'll talk about the triangle later, but what you can see is you can kind of see this. Okay, or if you want, you can see a diamond, which is in fact, you know, just something like that. So it's all keeping within that shape thing now this is framing the ear the ears are relatively stiff but the thing is is when the whole thing moves you know as i'm making a study of this i've been privately thinking wow those ears roger rabbit is you know is a great animation but many animators criticize it criticize the ears they say the ears swim around unnecessarily and they move when they shouldn't move so when i was making this study i was thinking to myself wow those ears are not moving at all this this is actually quite stiff but then when when you look at the bigger picture which is exactly what my stream is talking about you know you look at the bigger picture this is not stiff you know you, you, it doesn't there's nothing wrong there it's it's fine okay so now this um this thing comes under here like this with the bow tie coming in here so we're going to deal with the squash and stretch aspect so these things are going to come here and round there like that okay now we have this shape and this shape coming in and then this is going to be pushing that even more yeah you see my rough was out this shape would be more like this you see the breakdown is very very important for tying it all together in a good way okay it, it can work but then you know you can make or break your animation with your breakdown and your arcing and all that kind of thing i'm just going to do that because it's kind of off center off screen that area that that aspect it's not really visible the the 
trousers are blood red and they're glowing on the screen. I can't make out any lines. Okay, so this thing comes around here like this. So now we're opening out that. Now let's let's talk a little bit about the square that we see within here for the negative space. Okay, Richard Williams is a, a you know a shape master looking at this, which I, I previously would not have thought from my biases towards the more formulaic, I guess, uh, Disney drawing. But uh, but you know. Um, I can understand why he's a shape master because he loved fine art and fine art drawing and all that is absolutely obsessed with negative space okay and we see the negative space square right there okay which is very very good now the um, whiskers are just sometimes I put them in sometimes I don't and here we can see that there's some drag on the hands okay which come there like that right so here we have the breakdown going in there so now there will be one more breakdown that I want to do but let's just see how that arc flows now okay so we see how that arc now flows into there so now we've got the half arc so now it looks awkward to just jump up like that so let's see where wh how we get from there to there and then I think I'll call it a day okay let's just have a little blink at the chat to see what's going on never heard of that criticism of the ears interesting yeah well I guess you know uh, a lot of people say things some don't have the guts to say it out in the open but being in the animation circle particularly in the UK um, I can tell you what a lot of people say but I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna I'll just say the things that need to be said right so this is a lovely wow I can't quite make out the breakdown because it is it is wow there's so much obviously the way the upload has happened it's difficult to see I'm seeing like it's not a multiple drawing but I'm seeing two or three frames blurred next to each other because obviously I think the upload's been from a VHS um, I'm looking at this from YouTube uh, point of view right before I do that let's just um, let's go in here and let's look at some triangles okay so obviously we have this triangle okay obviously we have the main triangle of the body okay obviously we talked about the negative space between here and we can see the M pose happening here which then later goes into that M pose so and then obviously you know we talked about the lower this triangle and that okay so these uh, I think I pretty much covered them as I was doing them to be honest with you so let's let's go on and, and proceed to the uh, to the next uh, breakdown so the arc kinds of comes he kinds of come comes back that way he went that way and he's going back that way which is interesting now this I can literally see is on a almost on a on a I'm gonna put it on a third I was thinking it was on a half but I'm gonna put it on a third so the head is going to be somewhat here. Notice how I'm just focusing on the shape. I don't need to worry. See, I can do this line here like this, and I know that that's where the tip of the nose is going to be, and in here is going to be framed all the triangles, and divide that, and then we've got the eyes. You see, it's once you understand the stuff, it is not difficult. So then I can make a circle here and cut into there. Now what is nice is the ear. Okay, The ear is going to follow this action okay which is gonna delay and it's so amazing how he gets away with that with the big motion so then the hands come down with the triangle hair like this okay and then this this okay this and this right and then we have everything kind of just cheating so so much cheating going on with the squash and stretch the foot is coming up off the ground okay we can't really see that because it's the bottom of the screen and it's been cropped 
and then this one oh wow so then obviously i can just about make up what's happening here his foot we see the underside of his foot and the overside of his foot on this side right so there's some kind of curling action cheat going on here we see the trousers circles there and the bow tie there fitting in between uh, the other hand follows the triangle so we just want to keep within the triangle shape so one two three just like that so we essentially get this you see the nice circular kind of arc it's subtle okay it's subtle we go there 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 okay so it comes there there but then it doesn't go right back up we then go up like that okay it's a loop it's a loop let's draw that in and then we'll be done with this new bitmap layer okay right so it's going to be difficult to draw it in nicely or see anything because of the 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 way it's flickered between so many different frames but i'll do do what i know from the model okay so his eyes are closed okay i and his eyebrows are down here but luckily i guess to save me his hair is curled over there like that and we've got some bottom eye coming in through there the nose is actually angled this way okay and the mouth comes up here and the tooth fits in the bottom exactly as i explained okay the, sh the shape formula is, is all there you know the other cheek comes around here like this and i'm there just take note okay take note as to particularly in this day and age okay i'm not saying this to show off like and i didn't even use an eraser mm. i drew it all by myself i drew it i drew it without even making any mistakes and i didn't use an eraser no i'm not saying it for those reasons i'm saying note that i didn't use an eraser okay hardly hardly ever okay um and i didn't very hardly did i get my free transform tool out and start shifting things around there's nothing wrong with doing it occasionally once or twice but in this day and age which is why i was a little bit cross uh, with, with the software question because it gets asked so often is is, is you know <sighs> The reason I'm online, the reason those of you who are watching this stream and getting value from it and are enjoying it is because I'm concerned about the quality of the future animators. Okay, we're living in amazing times right now where we're able to express our art quite freely, you know, um, whenever we want, just like what I'm doing here. And we're, because of technology, technology is amazing okay but the flip side of it is is uh, people start to become too dependent on technology and it's uh, you know it's not a very good thing to be because automation is the future so you want to have some substance you want to have some relevance so the most important thing is to make sure that you train yourself to be very very good at what you do you train yourself to be, you know, confident, definite, um, certain, you know, of, of things and, you know, not too hung up about mistakes, um, just looking at the bigger picture. And you're going to find that you're going to be able to do everything very, very well. Um, this is a very weird shape here because it's a, it's a, probably because it is a breakdown and it's a very quick one so he can get away with it so you're going to be able to get things right and that's the most people say what's the way to work quickly and they think software is helping them with speed well yes software is helping me as a as a professional not have to do scanning in of my work and it's making me color things it's giving me camera moves that are a lot faster and easier but 
the essential fundamentals, it's the software isn't giving me those. So I can work quickly and effectively in software, but other people who are just using software, I'm going to build this puppet so I don't have to draw it over and over again and blah, blah, blah. You're wasting a lot of time learning things that are, are slowing you down rather than speeding you up. You know, so the quickest way to getting good is to actually get good. You know, that's that's it. Don't take your eye off the ball. Be like Roger here. His eyes are well on the ball. OK, right. So that's the quickest way to getting good. Now, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I'm not going to go any further because it's almost been a two hour stream and I don't like to go above two hours. But we've we've I've this is kind of like my tribute to the great Richard Williams, my favorite piece of work he's associated with. And the one that's given me the most value over the years has been Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I absolutely love it. Um, so I thought I'd do a breakdown of this scene that I did a breakdown for when I was an 11 year old boy. I did a breakdown of this drawing for a bunch of six year olds or five year olds. I remember I had to go down with my pen and teach all the other kids how to draw Roger Rabbit. So, so funny, bizarre sense of deja vu today, but <laughs> this time I really know what I'm doing. Okay. Back then I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the animation instructor was in me even as a nine-year-old or an 11-year-old. So anyway, so the main thing to take away from this is the we've, we've put in two breakdowns. These are all the keys and extremes with two breakdowns, okay? So let's just talk about this once more. So the first thing we have here is, is the law of anticipation. I've used pose to pose, okay, while doing this. So that's, that's the first law that we've covered is pose to pose, right? Then we have um, the law of uh, slowing in and slowing out, okay? So obviously there's a big, big move, little move here and a big move here. And this is also the law of timing, okay? So the law of timing and the law of slowing in and slowing out. So again, here we slow in, again, we slow in here and there's a big move here. So this is all timing and there's a lot of complicated stuff going on between here, which I haven't even gotten close to telling you about. So um, <clears throat> I've just done what I could in two hours. OK, so so then we've so we've got the law of pose to pose. We've got the law of slowing in and slowing out and timing. Now we've got the law of anticipation because here he's before he's going to go down. OK, he's going to do this little move here, which is a tiny little anticipation. OK, but that's actually not the anticipation. So hold your horses. OK, this is the anticipation. OK, into the take. So here's the anticipation pose. But then, ah, but what's this? This is the law of primary and secondary action, okay? So we don't need to have this little move beforehand. It helps for timing. It helps for slowing in and slowing out. But it's a secondary action, which adds to this, okay? Which adds, again, this first take could have just been it. But we got another take, okay? Which is another, could be argued which one is primary, which one is secondary. Even I don't know, okay? <laughs> but it's crazy. There's so much goodness going on in here, right? So... So let's just go pose to pose, slowing in, slowing out, um, timing, anticipation, primary, secondary action, the law of arcing. We talked about the looping, the looping arcs. Okay, so everything's arcing, working in an arc, an arc of motion. Everything is happening there like that. So the law of arcing. Okay, we've obviously got the law of squash and stretch. Look how squashed he is here, and look how stretched he is here. You can't go any further than that okay so we've got the law of squash and stretch then we have the law of um, drag follow through drag and overlap so we have the hair we have the ears and we have obviously you know all kinds of things the bow tie the tongue follow through drag and overlap so we've also got that let me think what else we've got we have got the law of solid drawing all the shapes and all the triangles that I've been showing you have all been solid drawing. However much this character has changed size and whatever, and I've kind of just done it, although using pose to pose, I haven't paid much attention to volume, but it's solid. It's fairly solid, okay? And it's even more solid from what, I, what we had, what we were understanding. So we have the law of solid drawing. Now we have some of my most favorite ones. We have got the hidden law, which is the law of staging. Now, the point of this scene is, is he has 
been caught up telling the woman that he's going to look after the baby and if anything happens he's something bad is going to happen to him okay and he turns his head and the baby is off screen climbing he's opened a load of drawers and everything's falling out from knives and graters and all kinds of things so this is how he reacts oh my god that's a huge thing ah okay so that's the staging of the scene it's a huge double take this is like you know it's not just one it's another one like this okay that's how much it means to him so that's the law of staging then you have the law of exaggeration okay and then dying it all together is the law of appeal okay so we have got all those laws going on in there let's see if i've missed a law pose to pose squash and stretch or slow in slow out st timing staging appeal exaggeration primary secondary solid anticipation follow through overlap no i've taken you through all the 12 laws that occur within this scene of animation and there's so much more like the staggered movement between hair and hair is a primary secondary action the staggered movement between hair and hair is primary secondary action because he doesn't just slow in and out of these he sort of jutters and staggers in between them so that has been my little uh live stream which is kind of like really thanking the the whole you know my little tribute to richard williams and um you know thanking him and sharing the love sharing everything he's given us um and just learning from the great master not from his survival kit but learning some some things from that i can learn that are perhaps at a more advanced level and learn myself and study those and share my process of studying them and the things that i look for when i like to sharpen my game and just share that with you and we can all enjoy that together again i'm sorry to read peop that people are asking about the software in the in the um chat it might seem like oh here he goes again talking about software but Richard Williams what software did he use okay why do people still want to read his book if it's all about the software come on I've just given you all this goodness I've just given you all this real information you know I'm all about the real animator training this is the stuff that you need to learn doesn't matter what software I'm deliberately using storyboard software and I tell you what knowing that I can out animate any any of these so-called pro grade 2d animators today using their harmonies or using their tv paints or whatever it just doesn't matter i can do it i can do it as good or better than them using storyboard software so it really doesn't matter you see what matters is the real principles of animation that's why i'm here that's why i'm talking to you and that's what i'm trying to help you understand so it would have been nice if the last few comments in the chat were a little bit more to do with Richard Williams or or animation or something like that but animation software is not animation there'll come a time where you'll be able to animate just by looking at the camera in your mobile phone and just shaking your head and getting a perfectly renditioned Buzz Lightyear you what will you say what phone did you use you know that's it that's the animation of the future for those kind of things this is real animator training for people who are going to remain artists in spite of the advancing technology and who are going to continue to push the art just as richard williams did thank you richard williams thank you for from the bottom of my heart as a british animator okay who's grown up not in america not not from that background but because you came to my country and you enlightened the people in my country the generation before me right thank you right thank you for making roger rabbit thank you for helping me have my dreams because <laughs> yeah that's why i'm here that's that's why i'm doing what i'm doing um and on that note i'm going to say bye bye <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching. Thank you. Bye. Rest in peace indeed. Rest in peace.